You guys all got chairs, it looks like. Oh, I think we brought some donuts, didn't we? You guys want a donut? There's a really great donut shop in uh, Sycamore. Why don't you guys bring your seats, you know, like somewhere that we're together so I don't have to spin 360. I'm gonna turn the mic on so I don't have to scream at you. The biggest waste of time that any of us have when we're training anything, I don't care what it is, something for your job. Um, I was just at a conference and my big takeaway was, was this. They had like no goal of what we were doing. It was like uh, one guy kind of bullshitted about this one thing, somebody else bullshitted about another thing. And like none of it was cohesive or directed to like a specific outcome. You know what I mean? Uh, so we're gonna be super specific in what we're trying to do this weekend. There's a million things that we can learn with a pistol or a rifle. I want to train robust and repeatable skills, meaning robust that they'll stand up to the rigors of violence, fatigue, uh, bad weather, right? Yesterday it was inclement weather. And are they repeatable, right? If I can do this thing one time and it works okay, that's great. Like you ever whip the basketball from the center court and it goes in? like after 140 tries. You know, you've all done that, like as a kid around, like you throw a basketball or something, right? You've done something like that and it works, but can you do it over and over and over again? You get what I'm saying? And that's kind of where we're, what we're looking at here. I don't care if you've got a sub-second draw, what are you hitting when you drew the gun? Are you hitting just like the berm or are you able to hit a measured target at a known distance? And that's could be a million things, right? You guys that were here yesterday, we talked about some of this, but we'll go way deeper into it. So what do we base that, that training on? Well, it depends. What desired outcome are you looking for? And that I think is, you know, where we should always start. What, why are you here? Why are you here, McKeague? Uh, to get more uh, confident with uh, firearm. Did you guys hear that? He wants to be more confident with his firearm. What does that mean? Well, uh, it means having more faith in myself that when I go to draw, I'll be able to draw and hit, shoot what I need to at that point in time. So I didn't hear confidence in your firearm. I heard confidence in yourself. Yeah. So, so when you leave Monday, you're back at work, whatever you do, sleeping in bed, told your wife that your pussy hurt because you were out in the mud all weekend. Tired. Huh? Tired. Tired. And you lay there and you're fantasizing about your time here, all the dick jokes, all the fun we had. What, what like standard will you have to meet to say that you achieved the objective of gaining more confidence? So therein lies the, the question, right? Like, and I put you on the spot on purpose. My friend Sang likes to say, we don't know what we don't know. So what often happens? You wanna learn everything. Oh, I, I gotta go to this precision rifle class. I'm gonna go to this medical class. I'm gonna go to this class that does rope stuff because that seems cool and badass. I'm gonna go to this class that's done uh, by this technical competition shooter that's like the best in the world and he's gonna show me how to transition target arrays. And I'm gonna, that's all an investment in learning something, but what are you learning that supports the goal? And that, your goal could be just to have fun and shoot and do crap like that. Mine is to be capable in violence. That's my goal. I don't want to um, waste my time going down rabbit holes, so to speak, that take me any farther away from that. There's only so much time in life to do this stuff, so I want, I want efficiency in my training, just like we want efficiency in our movements. I want efficiency in training so that, God forbid, I need to draw a weapon in violence. This, there's not a lot of do-overs in that, right? And if, even, if, even if there is a do-over, I wanna make sure that in that moment I have the highest probability of success. Kanan and I were talking about tying some knots. I'm not a good knot tier. I got a brother that's a world-class rock climber. He can tie knots. You don't want, and I mean, I could tie a knot that probably won't come undone. I know like a few, I know a bowline, I know figure four, I know some knots, 
But if we had to like rappel off some shit, do you want me to tie the knot? Or you want my brother Tom to tie the knot that's been at Yosemite and other such places? Like, who do you want to tie the knot, right? You want the specialist in knot tying that can teach you how to tie all the knots and sits in front of his TV, which he does, and fucking like Rain Man ties knots. Get what I'm saying? So like in that specialty of putting your weight on a rope on a rock wall or off of a tower, which he teaches that shit too, that's the guy you probably want. So I think we need to be super specific in what problem we're trying to solve. I put a post up yesterday on this group we've got on Facebook with a picture of us out here miserable. Who's ever heard the term, if, you ain't, if it ain't raining, you ain't training? You're like, nah, I don't know about that. Like, if, if, if there is a point where the efficacy of training diminishes and, and the value goes out the window, especially if you don't have a baseline set of skills. For example, would any of you teach your kid to drive first week, month in the car and like, hey, it's a blizzard, get in the car, we're going on 90 and we're gonna see if you can do 20 miles an hour over the speed limit and we'll you know, play Frogger with plow trucks and semi trucks. You would, you would never do that, right? You wouldn't go buy a, or rent a high performance sports car and put your kid in it and say, let's go to the Malibu down California coast and race along these cliffs. You wouldn't do that, right? So you, we are like, the whole like weather, fatigue, as I started to mention, darkness, these kinds of things. Oh, I gotta be able to do this because bad guys or calamity comes in these other types of weather or conditions. Maybe, but you need to have a baseline set of skills and it's best to learn that shit when you're comfortable and rested, etc. So in that thread, I wanna make sure that we're like do, of the mindset that we can be focused on a particular goal. Your goal might be yours, might be completely different than his or his. And there might be compounding goals, but there's gotta be some broad overarching concept. And that is these skills should support us winning in violence, period. With the rifle, with the pistol, and we should have fun doing it. We gotta think, is what I'm doing how I'd wanna output in reality and there comes a whole bunch more questions i don't know what i want to output so then we go back to statistics and data and real world things and this is why we're doing what we're doing because here's a bunch of empirical data that says that this is a best case scenario make sense i understand you guys have businesses and lives but we have a responsibility to keep each other safe treat this like we're flying an airplane treat this shit like we're hooking up gas lines at a nursery, treat this shit like we're doing surgery because there's gonna be thousands and thousands of rounds fired into the berm this weekend. That's thousands and thousands of opportunity for us to forever alter our life and somebody else's. And I think that uh, that requires us to be hyper-focused and vigilant, which is why fatigue in the weather play a big factor. Um, go ask us, who skis? or snowboards. Go ask somebody that works at a mountain, when do you see the most accidents? And they'll tell you it's the last run or two of the day when the lift operator say, hey man, last run, or you know, lifts are shutting down in 20 minutes. Man, I gotta get up there one more time. You've been up there all day, you're tired, you're hungry, your knees are starting to hurt, you just wanna get that last run, especially out of towners that are like at the mountain from flatlands. And the dude blows his knee out or crashes into the trees. Same with surfing. It's always the end of the day shit. It's fatigue and poor decision making. Who trains a martial art here? Nobody? The boxing, jiu-jitsu, karate? Oh, a little bit. What do you do? Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Cool. The reason I ask about the martial arts thing is uh, and one, it's staggering to me how many guys will come to pay for gun classes. Because why are you guys here? Does, does everybody agree with that? Yeah. To protect your life, the life of a loved one. So, how many push-ups did you do this morning? How many jumping jacks? How many air squats? How much stretching did you do? What'd you eat? But martial arts, like, I mean, are you more, what, what, what's more uh, probable in your life? Have to put your hands on somebody or have to shoot somebody? Probably put your hands yeah, on Yeah, but you're not training to do that? not berating you, but I want to talk about that for a second. 
So, um, and I, I've noticed more and more people aren't doing that. So why not train something that's much more probable? Not to mention, like, you ever have like a, like a drunk, belligerent person you care about? Drunk asshole, uncle, you know? Just gonna f shoot Uncle Vincent. You know, like, you can't do that. Maybe you can hold him down and, you know, calm him down until police get there or whatever. But I mean, there's times in life you can't just shoot somebody. Not every problem requires to be shot. Karate, or you said Taekwondo. So you tied your belt on, stepped out on the mat. What would you do as you approach the mat? Yeah. And then like, here's your sensei or Sifu. What'd you do to him? Yeah. And then here's my training partner. What'd you do to him? And then maybe there's a picture on the wall with the flag from Korea, right? Is that where that's from? And then, and then, oh, you do this? Whatever, yeah. That's some communist shit? American flag right there. Okay, got it. You get my point? Yeah. What are you doing all that for? That whole bowing thing, it's not just like uh, some like rote movements of like, eh, eh. And this is a mindset thing I want to start the day with. How many times do you do this? How you doing? Uh, or, hey, have a good day. Hey, have a good day. I mean, you're not really even thinking about anything, right? How many times have you done this? Waiter comes, enjoy your meal. Yeah, you too. Or enjoy your flight. Yeah, you too. Or enjoy your movie. Yeah, you too. And then you're like, they're not going to the movie or they're not eating or they're not going on the airplane. You're not even thinking about the shit. The bowing to the mat is this space. We're not gonna bow to the range. Without each other here, we, one of you can't pay 200 bucks and have us come and bring all this shit out here and do all this, so we need each other to do it. We also need the stress of, because we're gonna create stress on each other, just the mere fact that there'll be 30 eyeballs staring at you will create some level of stress. Especially for men to look less than in front of a group, that's a, tremendous amount of stress for a lot of people. We need that from each other, but we'll be supportive. We're not gonna laugh and be like, ha ha, Victor, you suck. Like we wouldn't do that, but maybe a little just for fun. So repeat after me. I, I appreciate that the rest of you guys are out here with me. I'm gonna be a kick-ass training partner. I'm gonna pay attention. I'm gonna push you. And I expect you to push me in return. Just not like in a weird, creepy, gay, showery way. I have a shirt that we sell that says train naked. My dad, who's a f dad, is like, what are you, f You know, literally be out there naked with a bunch of dudes? Do you guys know how the Greeks entered their training? The wrestling universities, it literally said, enter as you are, which meant like the way that you came into the earth, naked. It was saying like, this is me, man. This is all I got. This is all I got. I got no weapons. I, you see me as I am and together we scrap and they got all oiled up and they do their shit, right? But the mindset of that is like, this is it. This is all I got. I'm bringing it here. I'm laying it on the table and in that you become better. The best people I know in this world as far as quality of human beings are dudes that train martial arts on the regular and approach it with that mindset. And there's a reason that I have this conversation and I'll end with this as we hit the range. Look at any person that's a warrior, which is what you're trying to do here in some way, shape or form, they ultimately progress to art. Every one of them, they start doing poetry. The samurai wrote haikus and dudes play the piano or the guitar, or they paint. Now we have all these modern warriors that are brewing beer and gardening and doing, you know, hippie shit. Because you realize that the totality of all of this, this murdery stuff is, I want to create a life that's valuable. So in that, I want you guys to understand this, the reason I'm discussing this so vehemently is all the safety shit is fine, but not appreciating what we're really trying to do here is how we end up with accidents. We're gonna be aggressive, we're gonna be moving a bunch, 
we're going to be tired and we need to be able to drag ourselves back into that headspace of why we're doing this. We're going to work on developing systems. So everything that we're going to do this weekend, one thing will support the next thing, will support the next thing, will support the next thing. So if we're not paying attention to an individual component, forgot to tighten that one screw, parts will fall off later. Understand? Yep. The sequencing of tasks is how we get a repeatable outcome. And that's what shooting is. The essence of all of this is can I get a repeatable result? When my sights or dot are out in front of me on a target, do I have ingrained systems that make the bullet appear where I want them to? Period. We're gonna figure out real quick what your baseline is. We're gonna line you guys up. If your gun is in a bag, we're gonna take the bag up to the four yard line. If the gun is in a holster, leave it in the holster. If you have to swap ammo, I will tell you when and how to do that. We're gonna all go up to the four yard line, which is the closest line. You're gonna line up. I'm gonna give you all a number. You will be numbered one to 18. That will be your number all weekend. Don't worry about where you're at on the line because we will be moving around. Hey, little brother, what do you think of gunfighter gun oil? I'm gonna have to show you. <sighs> Hey Steve, what do you think of gunfighter gun oil? Well, Mick, uh... I said, I said, I said, <laughs> hey Steve, what do you think of gunfighter gun oil? Well, Mick, I have to show you about that. Still working on it, but you. Oh, yeah. So you like the lube? 